Good day everyone! Today we start a new section of this course where we will be addressing um, what is perhaps the most important limitation of the entire framework that we have been studying so far and uh, this is its uh, inability to capture and exploit uh, prior information that we may have about the parameters that we uh, want to estimate. The entire framework that we will start developing today uh, builds upon the theory of conditional probability and therefore it is uh, absolutely uh, essential that we are all comfortable with the concepts uh, therein. So uh, before starting uh, to talk about um, uh, estimation we will be um, looking uh, at uh, a simple example that will uh, help us uh, remember um, the key concepts in um, conditional probability theory. So consider a, an experiment uh, where uh, there are uh, two boxes and the boxes contain balls. In a first uh, step we select uh, one of the boxes, we select uh, box uh, one with probability alpha and box 2 with probability 1 minus alpha. And in the second step we draw a ball uniformly at random from the box that we selected in step 1. Okay, So note that uh, we say uniformly okay, at random. There are uh, some people that uh, omit this word and uh, that is not uh, actually um, correct because uh, if one just says uh, at random then um, it doesn't have an implication that the, the probabilities of each uh, ball uh, are the same right so uh, please remember to say uh, uniformly uh, whenever you, that is what you want to say and uh, the um, value of the um, or the number on the ball that we have selected in step two will be modeled as a random variable, and uh, this uh, will be denoted by uh, x. So uh, at this point, I uh, suggest that you stop the video and try to compute the probability that the ball that we draw in step 2 has the number 2 on it. Okay, I hope that you made it. This is a standard problem in probability theory uh, where we are given the probabilities of uh, some events and we are requested the probability of uh, another event, right? And, and the way to solve these um, problems is um, by uh, expressing the event uh, whose probability we are requested in terms of the events whose probability is given. Okay, so in this specific um, example, it is easy to recognize that the event where x equals 2 uh, can be expressed as the union of two events, right? The event where x equals 2 and b equals 1 and the event where x equals 2 and b equals 2, right? And uh, since the probability of the union of these joint events uh, equals the sum of their probabilities, we have this uh, equality here. So if you are not familiar with uh, these concepts or you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I suggest that uh, you watch again the review video on probability theory earlier in this series. Now one can apply the definition of conditional probability to express this uh, joint probability as the product of the probability that b equals 1 uh, and the um, times the uh, probability that b equal that x equals 2 given that b equals 1 okay and the same can be uh, done for the second term right just applying the definition of conditional probability <laughs> 
And now we have effectively expressed the desired uh, probability in terms of quantities that we know. So the probability of B equals 1 is alpha, okay, the probability of choosing ball 2 in step 2, when in step 1 we have selected ball 1, right, is obviously one third because there, there are uh, three balls and all of them have the same probability. Uh, similarly, the probability of choosing um, box 2 is 1 minus alpha, right, and the uh, probability of uh, selecting uh, or drawing um, ball 2 out of this um, box is uh, one fourth because there are uh, four balls and all have the same probability. Now let's go for the expectation of x. Again, I suggest that uh, you stop the tape and uh, try to compute it on your own first. Okay, so here there are uh, two uh, paths to uh, reach the solution. One is the long path and the other is the short path. Uh, let's look at the long one uh, first. Uh, it, uh, here we just uh, apply the definition of uh, expectation, which is the weighted sum of the values that the random variable takes, uh, weighted by the and the, the probabilities of, uh, of each value, okay? Uh, <clears throat> to evaluate this expression, we just need to perform uh, the same operation that we have done in, in, the, in the previous exercise for each value of x, right? So for x equals uh, 1, 2, 3, 6, and 9, okay? So obviously this takes uh, a couple of minutes, but we uh, will arrive at the uh, result. However, there is a um, smarter way to uh, proceed here. The idea is to uh, is not to uh, up, um, not to substitute these uh, uh, probabilities with their uh, values obtained in this way, but to uh, replace. Uh, this with uh, the uh, this uh, summation, right? The uh, sum of the uh, probability that uh, b equals little b times the conditional uh, probability of x equals x given b equals b, right? So this is precisely the same operation that we have done uh, when we arrived uh, at uh, this uh, second uh, line here, okay? And uh, now uh, one can just uh, uh, note that this uh, this uh, summation over uh, p uh, so over uh, the probability that b equals little b uh, doesn't depend on x and therefore can come out of this uh, of this uh, summation here, right? Uh, this is just the distributive uh, property of the uh, of the sum and product, right? And this uh, leaves us with uh, this uh, inner summation here, which is the uh, weighted uh, sum of the values that the random variable can take, weighted uh, by uh, these uh, conditional probabilities, right? So this is like this, uh, the definition of expectation, but uh, with this probability replaced with this conditional probability. So this is uh, what we call the conditional uh, expectation of x given uh, b, right? This uh, inner summation. And uh, obviously we have one uh, different uh, or potentially different value of this uh, expectation for each uh, value of uh, little b, right? And uh, again, what we have here is the weighted sum of these numbers uh, weighted by these um, probabilities and therefore this is nothing but an expectation over mb of this conditional expectation. So note uh, this uh, equality, right? This uh, will uh, this uh, always holds um, conditional expectations and behave in some way as uh, co uh, conditional PDFs, right? Like the in the sense that the uh, 
the, the expectation uh, with respect to one variable of the conditional expectation given that variable is the, uh, the same as the expectation with respect to the joint distribution. We will dig a little bit uh, deeper uh, in uh, subsequent uh, slides. So uh, now one can just uh, expand this uh, sum, right, uh, to write uh, alpha times the, this conditional expectation where b equals uh, 1 uh, plus 1 minus alpha times the conditional expectation where b equals 2, okay? And uh, therefore it remains only to uh, compute these uh, conditional expectations right? Um, but they are very easy to compute. Uh, in, uh, in particular, the expectation of x when we have selected um, box 1, right, is uh, just uh, 1 plus uh, 2 plus 6 divided by 3, right? Because uh, they have the same probability, right? So this gives us uh, 9 divided by 3, which should be 3, right? Uh, this is a, a, a typo. And uh, the, uh, the expectation of x given um, b equals 2, uh, given and that we have selected box 2, is obviously 2 plus 3 plus 6 plus 9 divided by 4, again, because they have the same probability, and this uh, gives us 5, right? So, as you can see, the, uh, the number of computations uh, required here is uh, much smaller than the one the number of computations and uh, required here and uh, the key is that we uh, we have exchanged the order of these uh, two summations right and uh, therefore we don't uh, uh, repeat operations right if we do this uh, we we go in this uh, long way uh, we are doing more operations because because some of them are actually uh, the same to some uh, extent. So uh, we will go um, deeper uh, in this um, in this kind of uh, processes. Uh, at uh, this point, this is just uh, to build uh, some intuition and to review the basics. Uh, but uh, don't hesitate uh, to come back to this slide whenever you want to interpret an expression that involves a conditional probabilities of or expectations. I think it is uh, very useful to think uh, in terms of uh, boxes and balls, at least uh, to a certain extent. Now that we have warmed up, uh, we are ready to embark our development of um, Bayesian estimation theory. And the main idea is that uh, until now, we assumed that the parameters that we wanted to estimate uh, were mm, deterministic, right? And that uh, makes it difficult to uh, exploit uh, information of the kind that some values are more likely than others, right? Uh, so uh, this ha it happens uh, uh, in, in, in typically in applications that we have some uh, knowledge about the true parameter even before seeing the data, right? So imagine, uh, for instance, that we would like to estimate the average height of people in a country, let's say uh, Norway, and uh, in, in that case uh, we expect that the average height is uh, uh, perhaps around uh, 180 meters, right? At least we know that uh, 175 would be more likely than um, uh, 1.6, right? So, uh, but the, the, the estimators that we have considered so far, such as maximum likelihood estimators, don't really provide a means to uh, encode that kind of uh, information. Another difficulty that we experienced was the dependence of the uh, performance uh, metrics that we considered on the uh, true value of the parameters, right? So remember that uh, this uh, is uh, the, 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 the kind of plots uh, that we uh, drew in the previous part of the course uh, looked uh, like this. 
so the in this case the MSC is uh, uh, seen to be a function of the true parameter theta and uh, this uh, mm, brought us uh, to show that uh, there is actually uh, no estimator minimizing uh, MSC for all uh, theta right because uh, in order uh, for an estimator to be optimal it must be the best for all values of theta right uh, we also saw that uh, even in the case where we restrict our attention to uh, unbiased estimators it may happen that uh, none of them has the uh, smallest MSC for all values of theta right we said in that case that there exists no uh, m value and uh, this is uh, perhaps a little bit um, problematic because uh, an estimator may be uh, uh, the, the best uh, for uh, the most relevant values of the uh, parameter uh, perhaps it's not the, the, mm, the best for values that are not very important right and still there exists no uh, optimal estimator according to the criteria that we used uh, in the in the first part of the course right so uh, think for ex for example in the example in in the in the uh, task of estimating the the height or average height of uh, the Norwegians I don't really uh, mind if my estimator is not uh, good when the true uh, value of the height is uh, 140 meters right or or 230 uh, right I, I want it to uh, want it to be good at uh, other uh, at intermediate values of the of the height right but uh, this uh, is not uh, but our criteria uh, were not uh, sufficiently uh, flexible to acco uh, accommodate that some values are more uh, relevant than others and this is uh, uh, another um, another limitation addressed by mm, this uh, new framework that we start uh, developing today. The Bayesian approach to estimation theory is to model the parameters that we want to estimate as random variables and to equip them with a, a probability distribution that reflects what we know about uh, those parameters before we see the data. This uh, probability distribution can be thought of as uh, providing how probable or uh, likely each value of the parameters uh, is uh, or even how relevant uh, it is. Uh, to illustrate this, uh, let's resort once more to uh, the example of DC level estimation and remember that uh, so far we introduced assumptions of the kind that uh, the noise was uh, Gaussian distributed and uh, independent uh, along uh, n perhaps uh, but we assumed uh, that the DC level was itself a um, deterministic unknown uh, quantity. In contrast in uh, in uh, Bayesian estimation uh, we uh, model this DC level as uh, a random variable and we need to specify a probability distribution so for example one can assume that uh, A is Gaussian distributed with a certain mean and, and variance and one can also assume that perhaps it's uh, independent uh, of the noise samples uh, note that um, this is uh, just a way of specifying the joint distribution uh, between A and, and the W's, right? If we don't say that they are independent, then we need another way to specify what is the um, joint distribution between A and, and the W's, right? The uh, distribution uh, that we assume uh, for A can be uh, il visualized uh, in this way uh, this is typically referred to as the prior uh, distribution because it is the distribution before we see the uh, data and uh, it uh, is a, and, and its uh, um, standard deviation uh, or, or the, the width of this distribution essentially 
uh, reflects uh, uh, the uncertainty that we have about the value of this parameter before seeing the data, right? So uh, suppose that this uh, sigma a is uh, very small, then uh, this distribution would be very picky and um, most of the uh, probability would be concentrated around a small set of values of, of a, right? In that case, uh, it means that we have little uncertainty about the uh, about a right all uh, we expect that it is very uh, in a very small set of uh, values right on the other hand if sigma a is large right then this uh, is uh, spread across a large set of values right and that uh, means that we are not sure about any specific value right it can be uh, um, can, can the, the value, the true value, can be in a much bigger uh, set. We, we, uh, I mean, uncertainty is much higher, right? And this new set of assumptions has uh, far-reaching implications that even affect the way we generate data. Uh, for instance, uh, when running Monte Carlo simulations. Remember that uh, in the past we would have a random number generator to uh, obtain uh, realizations of the noise samples, uh, but we would uh, select a um, value of the uh, DC component uh, uh, arbitrarily, right? Uh, in contrast, in Bayesian estimation, we need another random generator to uh, obtain uh, realizations of uh, of a right then we add those uh, that realization and the realizations of the noise samples to obtain realizations of the uh, of the data right uh, the uh, <coughs> estimator uh, in the past uh, work worked in the same way as uh, now it just accumulates the or or uh, collects the the data samples and produces an estimate, but uh, in the past the distribution of this estimate right, was uh, determined by the distribution on, of the noise and the value of A, right? So uh, note that uh, from a mathematical perspective this is a function of X and X is a function of A and W, right? So the uh, the, this uh, imposes what the distribution of um, the estimate must be. Uh, however, now uh, we don't have uh, um, the dependence on a specific value of a, right? Uh, the, the distribution of uh, this estimate will be determined by the distributions of the, uh, the distribution of the w's and the distribution of A, right? So it's a fundamentally um, different uh, perspective. And uh, let us be careful with the notation. Note that A is not a function of N, right? It is the same value for all uh, samples, right? So we uh, only use the uh, uh, random number generator for A once, right? Once for each realization of the data. However, W depends on N, so we need to run this uh, random number generator once per sample, right? And the estimator is again, as, as before, uh, run uh, for each uh, realization of um, all the data samples in, 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 in the data set. Now let us dig a little bit deeper into how we should specify a um, probabilistic model for doing Bayesian estimation. So uh, first of all, I recall that we uh, used uh, this vector notation uh, where uh, vector x collects the samples of the data and vector w collects the samples of the noise. We used to uh, specify the uh, PDF of X uh, for each value of A, right? But uh, this function uh, no longer uh, makes uh, sense because, the, because A is a random variable now, right? Uh, instead, what we need to do is to specify the joint distribution uh, between uh, X and uh, A, right? 
and and this is something that we uh, have done uh, uh, here with these assumptions but now we will do it uh, more explicitly uh, the reason for uh, specifying the joint distribution is uh, of a f very uh, fundamental nature and remember that in estimation we uh, need to infer the value of the parameter from the data right and therefore what we are uh, exploiting under the hood is the relation between a and the data right and uh, in this case since and both are uh, random um, uh, variables we need to uh, express this and relation by means of a joint probability and distribution, right? Uh, think that uh, in the extreme case where uh, X and A are not related at all, they are uh, statistically independent, then um, X does not provide any information about A, right? Therefore, we uh, cannot uh, really make a good job at uh, estimating A in that case. So uh, what follows is just a um, sort of review of the techniques that we use in probability theory to uh, obtain the joint distribution of X and A from these uh, sets of uh, this set of assumptions. Uh, if uh, again, if you have uh, um, difficulties uh, to understand this, you can uh, watch the review video on probability theory. So uh, the uh, natural approach is to uh, decompose this uh, joint distribution as this uh, product here uh, where we have just applied the, our working definition of conditional PDF, right? So this uh, P of A is uh, directly uh, given by uh, this assumption here. So what we need to do is to find this uh, conditional PDF. So to uh, avoid confusion, I will use the uh, subscript uh, uh, 0 to uh, denote um, specific values and uh, no subscript to denote um, random variables, right? So in, uh, we typically use the same notation for uh, vectors, uh, real vectors and uh, random variables, right? Because there's no uh, confusion right by the context but in this case let us uh, mark this uh, explicitly um, because it is uh, uh, it reduces confusion in the specific example so um, what we can note here is that this uh, uh, conditional PDF can be expressed as this other uh, conditional uh, PDF the conditional PDF of the noise given a evaluated at this point and the reason is that the uh, event where x equals x0 by uh, due to this uh, equation here and the fact that a uh, equals a0 is the same event as the uh, as the event where w takes uh, this value here okay so the uh, we have just uh, uh, used this specific value of a here and move this term to the left hand side right so since both events are the same right and the density should be the, the same and, uh, and now one could think that uh, okay we haven't gained anything just by moving from here to here because we have also a conditional PDF here but the uh, critical distinction is that uh, now in this uh, right hand side uh, this W and A are uh, independent, right, by our uh, assumption here. So, uh, therefore, conditioning on A is like not conditioning at all, and then we can just uh, uh, take the, the PDF of the noise and uh, evaluate it at this uh, point. So, this uh, PDF is, uh, as we know, uh, given by this expression, and therefore we would just need to uh, substitute uh, this um, vector uh, here as uh, w, right? If we do that, uh, we obtain uh, this uh, here for this first uh, uh, term, and the second term is just the uh, PDF of a, a Gaussian uh, 
and of this Gaussian distribution, right? So this uh, provides the uh, joint and uh, the desired uh, uh, joint PDF of X and A, right? It follows from this uh, from these assumptions, but sometimes it is not uh, straightforward to find the uh, derive the joint PDF out of uh, uh, this kind of assumptions. Now that we understand how to specify a probabilistic model for doing um, Bayesian estimation, uh, we are ready to formulate the Bayesian estimation problem. The starting point is, as we said, the joint distribution uh, of the data and the parameters that we want to estimate. And uh, remember that this can be specified, for instance, um, by means of their joint uh, PDF, right? Which, uh, uh, recall, it is defined for uh, values of x in a set uh, calligraphic x, which we uh, can uh, call the, the data space, right? And uh, values of theta in this uh, set capital theta, uh, that we can uh, call sometimes uh, the parameter space. The problem is uh, given x and also the uh, joint uh, uh, PDF of x and theta to estimate uh, theta. Okay. However, it is seldom the case that we are uh, directly provided this uh, joint PDF Instead, it is uh, more common that we are given the conditional PDF of x given theta and the uh, prior of uh, theta, right? This uh, function um, is typically referred to as the, the likelihood, okay? And it generally has the same functional form as the likelihood function that we studied uh, when we were doing maximum likelihood estimation or deriving uh, Kramer-Rau uh, lower bounds. However, from a mathematical perspective, uh, this is a different uh, creature, right? So this is a conditional PDF. In, uh, in contrast, the uh, likelihood function that we studied before is a uh, reinterpretation of the uh, PDF of the data seen as a, a function of the parameters, right? So, um, I mean, fundamentally different uh, creatures, but as I said, they generally share the same uh, functional form. Uh, so to do estimation in the in the until now what we were doing was to first uh, agree on a set of uh, estimation criteria uh, to uh, characterize what uh, what constitutes a good uh, estimator and then we try to find uh, good estimators according to uh, those criteria right uh, however, uh, in, in this uh, framework, we cannot apply those uh, criteria that uh, we had from uh, before, right? Because uh, now the parameters are um, random variables, right? So uh, instead, we need to uh, start our uh, this uh, task again and uh, decide what uh, uh, constitutes a, a good estimator uh, for this um, Bayesian estimation problem. And this is what we will do next. To this end, recall that our uh, favorite uh, metric in non-Bayesian estimation was the MSC, precisely because it quantifies the uh, distance from the estimate to the true value of the parameter, right? This, uh, and this is averaged across uh, values of the data, okay? In integral form, this can be expressed uh, in this way, uh, where we must note that uh, this um, expression uh, depends or, uh, on theta in two uh, ways, right? Uh, one is because uh, this, uh, this uh, square distance depends on, on, on theta, but uh, we see that uh, the, the PDF that we are using uh, to average is also uh, dependent on uh, theta, right? So the result of this integral is a function of theta, as we emphasized earlier, and this, uh, this was uh, 
uh, indicated by this uh, subscript uh, in the MSC. If we want to do uh, Monte Carlo estimation uh, to estimate uh, or to approximate this MSC, uh, remember that we had to generate realizations of the of the data, right, and uh, obtain this uh, square distance. Uh, but in, in all cases, for all realizations, uh, we use the same uh, theta, right? In um, Bayesian estimation, we prefer uh, to use the uh, Bayesian uh, MSC, uh, abbreviated uh, BMSC, which is defined in a pretty similar fashion, but uh, note that uh, and there is a distinction here, because uh, here we are averaging across x, but now uh, in the BMSC we average both across uh, theta and x, right? So this can be seen uh, more clearly in the integral form, right? Uh, so uh, uh, here we have a double uh, integral, right? And uh, we note that uh, we are integrating over theta, that means that uh, the result of this uh, integral uh, will not depend on, on theta, okay? In, uh, if we want to estimate uh, or approximate this uh, BMSC using Monte Carlo, uh, then uh, what we need to do is uh, not just to generate uh, realizations of the data for a fixed value of theta, we need to generate uh, uh, realizations that comprise and both values for uh, theta and values for x, okay? And uh, therefore, as we can see here, this uh, the result will not depend on a specific value of uh, theta, at least for su a sufficiently large uh, r, okay? The natural question at this point is uh, what is the relation between um, this non-Bayesian MSC and the Bayesian MSC? And uh, to uh, that end, uh, we uh, can uh, take um, this integral over here and replace this joint distribution with the product of the likelihood and the prior, right? Now one can uh, rearrange uh, terms to note that this can be written as uh, this uh, the, the integral over uh, theta uh, of this uh, inner integral weighted by uh, the prior uh, distribution, right? And uh, here, so we, we find this uh, the, the likelihood, okay? But uh, as we said before, this shares the same uh, functional form as the uh, likelihood function uh, from uh, before, right? And therefore, this inner integral takes the same values as and this integral here, okay? So one can just uh, write this as the uh, MSC for the value of, uh, for the sp a specific value of uh, theta, right? And then we just need to integrate the MSC across uh, theta, but weighted by the uh, value, the, by the, the prior distribution, right? So, uh, just by using the uh, definition of uh, expectation, this is nothing um, but the expectation over theta of the uh, classical uh, MSC, okay? So, uh, this can be uh, visualized uh, in this way. Uh, this uh, green curve uh, represents uh, the, the MSC of, a, of an estimator, right? It's a function of uh, theta. And here in uh, yellow-brown we have uh, uh, plotted the uh, prior distribution, right? So what this integral is telling us to do is to multiply these two curves and to integrate, right? So this is uh, like a, a, an average of the, of, this, uh, val of the values of this uh, green curve, but we are, given, uh, we are giving uh, a higher weight to the values uh, over here than uh, uh, two values over here, right? So therefore, the um, the prior distribution uh, captures in some way the uh, importance of uh, each uh, value of the parameters, right? So if we want to do well, uh, 
uh, in terms of BMSC, it means that we need a, a low uh, MSC, classical MSC, for the important values of the parameters, and it doesn't really matter uh, how well we do uh, for uh, values of the parameters that are uh, not uh, very important. Now that we have a performance metric that quantifies how good a, an estimator is, uh, the next logical step is to uh, try to find an estimator that uh, is as best as possible uh, in terms of that metric, right? So specifically, we will look for the estimator that minimizes the uh, BMSC. So uh, remember that uh, an, an estimator is a function uh, that uh, assigns a value of the uh, parameters to uh, each value of the data, right? And therefore, we can uh, express the uh, and the estimator and the best estimator in the BMSC sense as the argmin over uh, this family of functions of the uh, uh, of the BMSC. Okay. So uh, note that uh, we are um, minimizing the BMSC, but we refer to this estimator as the uh, minimum MSC estimator. Uh, this is, uh, we are not saying uh, minimum BMSC estimator, right, as uh, we uh, one could uh, think. And uh, I mean, these are uh, historical reasons, but there's no ambiguity here because, as, as uh, uh, we remember uh, from one of the first lectures of this course, there exists no uh, estimator that minimizes the classical uh, MSC. And therefore, whenever we uh, hear the term uh, MMSC estimator, we know that we are talking about a Bayesian estimator and that we are minimizing um, BMSC. So, the, uh, we need to solve this uh, problem where the optimization uh, variable is uh, a function, right? And this, in principle, doesn't seem uh, uh, straightforward, right? But uh, we will apply a very uh, interesting uh, trick uh, as, as we will see uh, next. So the first is to, um, the first step is to uh, use the definition of BMSC, which remember is this is given by this uh, integral here. And now we can um, replace this joint PDF um, by the product of this, uh, the conditional PDF of uh, theta given x times the PDF of x. Note that this is the opposite to what we did in the previous slide, where we replaced the joint PDF with the PDF of theta given, uh, of sorry, with the PDF of uh, x given theta times the uh, PDF of uh, theta, right? Uh, but of course, we can, we are free to choose uh, whatever uh, alternative uh, we want, right? We will both uh, hold because of the definition of, uh, of the conditional PDF, right? This uh, conditional uh, PDF uh, is uh, typically called the posterior distribu uh, distribution and uh, this or posterior PDF to be more precise. Uh, the, um, the reason is that it uh, provides the uh, distribution of the parameters for a specific value of the data, right? So it's like the, the distribution after seeing the data, right? That's what uh, we call it posterior. Why we call it posterior. Uh, now one can uh, rearrange uh, terms and uh, note that this uh, integral is just the result of uh, integrating this inner integral, right? And weighting it by uh, p of x, right? So here is uh, where the uh, um, magic comes. Um, note that this uh, inner integral will not depend on uh, theta because we are integrating it out, but it will be a function of x. So for each, each possible x, we have uh, potentially a different uh, value of this uh, inner integral. <laughs> 
And note that uh, this uh, inner, uh, each of those uh, inner integrals, right? So for each uh, value of x, the, does uh, not depend on the entire function uh, theta we are uh, looking for. It only depends on the value that that function takes for uh, that specific x. Okay. So uh, uh, this means that uh, what we can do is to uh, minimize uh, this uh, inner integral for each specific uh, value of uh, x, right? So after all, uh, optimizing with respect to a, a function of this form is just uh, uh, choosing what uh, value of the parameters we assign to each value of the uh, data, right? So uh, this means that uh, the, uh, the number or the vector that we need to put here is the uh, vector, in this case denoted uh, by z, that uh, minimizes this uh, inner integral for that specific value of x. Okay. So uh, this is, uh, I think, a very smart trick. And, uh, and in, indeed has turned our uh, optimization uh, problem uh, with respect to uh, a function into an optimization problem with respect to a vector. And we do know how to solve this kind of uh, problems as we will see in the next slide. So let's go for it. Uh, to uh, minimize a uh, function with respect to a vector, um, remember that uh, we need to set the gradient uh, equal to zero, right? As we have already done a few times uh, earlier in the course. So we need we have the gradient of the of the integral, and we can exchange the order of integration and the uh, and, and, and the gradient. Um, this is a, a step that um, uh, we engineers do with uh, ease, but a mathematician will, of course, uh, argue it uh, more uh, carefully. So the, one can uh, take the, uh, this um, gradient and obtain this uh, expression here. Uh, remember that if uh, uh, and you have material in the same folder as the slides and that explains how to uh, compute this kind of um, gradients. So now just uh, rearranging terms we can uh, express this as the difference between these two integrals and by setting uh, this equal to zero we uh, arrive at this expression. Now one can just note that uh, this is the integral of a PDF and therefore uh, it just uh, integrates to 1 and this second term is the integral of the values that the random variable takes and weighted by um, the PDF, right? And therefore this is just an expectation but since this is the expectation uh, or the integral with respect to a uh, conditional PDF, this is a, uh, con uh, a conditional uh, expectation. Okay, so this uh, tells us the uh, value uh, that the, our estimator needs to assign to each value of x, right? And since this derivation holds for any x, we have effectively solved the uh, the problem of uh, uh, minimizing uh, the BMSC with respect to a function in that class that we uh, showed in the in the previous slide. <coughs> so uh, this can be uh, uh, this is um, emphasized uh, here with a colorful um, box uh, in correspondence to the importance of this uh, expression, right? So this is an expression that we uh, all must uh, remember. The uh, MMSC estimator is the conditional mean of the, um, of the parameters given the data, right? So uh, this is, uh, I mean, in other words, is the expectation of the posterior uh, distribution, right? <coughs> 
And uh, it can be uh, interpreted easily in terms of the um, balls and, and boxes and that we uh, discussed uh, earlier uh, today, right? So it's a sort of the, um, the average value of the uh, parameters uh, uh, for uh, all and realizations for which the data uh, takes this uh, specific uh, value that we have uh, observed. Let us now uh, practice uh, the derivation of an MMSC estimator by applying what we have learned to uh, the Bayesian version of the DC level estimation example. We will denote the MMSC estimator of A uh, in this way. Since the MMSC estimator is the mean of the uh, posterior, what we need to do is to obtain the posterior uh, PDF. Applying the uh, definition of the conditional uh, PDF, we can express it in, in this way, right? Uh, where we actually have applied the definition twice. <coughs> Note that the uh, numerator is just the uh, joint PDF of X and A. And now we can note that uh, the, uh, this marginal uh, PDF is just the result of integrating the joint uh, with respect to A, right? And uh, one can uh, once more uh, apply the uh, uh, definition of a conditional uh, PDF to express uh, this integrand in, in this way. So what we have uh, uh, found here is that the uh, denominator is just the integral of the numerator, okay? So this uh, effectively uh, normalizes uh, this, uh, so normalizes the numerator so that the integral of this um, uh, posterior is one, right? As uh, required uh, in order to qualify as a, a PDF, right? So uh, <clears throat> now one can just uh, uh, replace uh, these expressions in the numerator with the expressions that we derived uh, in earlier slides and we arrive at uh, this uh, expression here. Uh, so uh, now one can just uh, absorb uh, these uh, constants here into a, a single constant, right? And uh, to express uh, this um, uh, in, in this way, okay, where uh, f of a is uh, given by this expression, right? So remember that the product of exponentials is the exponential of the uh, sum, right? And uh, this is uh, absorbing uh, these constants into a single uh, one is uh, a uh, typical uh, technique that we use in um, Bayesian estimation just to uh, simplify our expressions. We can do that because uh, note that this um, doesn't depend on, uh, so this, th these constants don't depend on on A, right? So it's obvious for the, these constants in the numerator, but uh, it is also clear that uh, once we have integrated uh, the numerator with respect to A, the result doesn't depend on A. So again, uh, we can uh, just uh, um, uh, uh, note that this constant is uh, such that uh, the integral of uh, this entire expression is one, right? And and that um, simplifies our uh, life uh, considerably because uh, this means that we can focus on uh, the part of uh, that that depends on on a, right? And just uh, disregard to some extent the constants. If at some point of the derivation we need the value of the constant, we know that uh, it will be just. Um, and the, uh, in this case, one over the integral of, uh, of this with respect to A, right? So this is a, a technique used all the time in um, Bayesian estimation. So uh, now uh, we need to make sense out of this uh, expression uh, 
and uh, here the the key will be to uh, um, note that if uh, we can express this uh, f of a as uh, a minus some number squared divided by another number plus a constant then uh, this will be a Gaussian uh, PDF, right? And the reason is that uh, this constant here will uh, show up uh, here and can be uh, taken out of the exponential just by using the same property of exponentials that we uh, mentioned uh, just a minute ago, right? And uh, so we can absorb it uh, here again and the result is obviously uh, has the same functional form as a um, Gaussian PDF and therefore it is a Gaussian PDF. So note that uh, I uh, chose this uh, notation and because uh, the number that we uh, put here will therefore be the mean of this uh, posterior and the number that we put here would be the, uh, the variance, right? So let's go for it. Uh, let us uh, try to express uh, this um, uh, function that we uh, uh, that comes from the exponent of uh, our posterior PDF uh, in this way for some uh, mu uh, a given x, uh, sigma square a given x, and some uh, constant. Okay, and the way uh, we w in which we will do that is to uh, write both. Uh, expressions as a polynomial in A, right? And uh, since um, uh, two polynomials are equal if and only if the coefficients that multiply each power of A are equal, then we will uh, be able to identify uh, sigma square A given x, uh, mu A given x, and, and the constant. Okay, so this is the high level uh, uh, procedure that we will follow. So we have already expressed this uh, f of a as uh, a polynomial in a. Uh, to do the same with uh, this uh, function here, we just uh, write the uh, square, this squared uh, two norm as the inner product of what is inside and itself. And uh, one can just uh, um, expand this product uh, to uh, arrive at this expression. Uh, uh, here we can just uh, uh, realize that uh, x transpose x is nothing but the square norm of x. Uh, x transpose 1 is the sum of the entries of x and therefore it's uh, n times the uh, sample mean of the entries of x. And uh, since this vector uh, of all ones has uh, dimension n, the, this inner product uh, is n. Uh, by uh, substituting uh, this uh, expression here and rearranging uh, terms, uh, we arrive at uh, this um, polynomial of A, right? So, uh, for this polynomial uh, to equal this polynomial, we need that uh, the coefficient that multiplies the quadratic term is uh, the same, right? So this must be 1 over sigma square a given x. And similarly, we need that the uh, coefficient that multiplies the uh, linear term uh, is, uh, is equal here and here, right? So we uh, find that this uh, coefficient has to be equal to this one. So uh, from this uh, first uh, condition we uh, find that uh, sigma square a given x must equal 1 over this number, okay? And uh, mu of uh, a given x can be found uh, from here, right? It should be uh, this uh, quantity times uh, sigma square a given x, right? So uh, what we have written here. And from this uh, first uh, uh, equation, we can just uh, uh, conclude that uh, mu of a given, mu sub a given x is given by uh, this expression. In short, we succeeded in expressing the exponent of our uh, posterior PDF as the exponent of a Gaussian PDF. 
This implies that uh, the posterior distribution is a Gaussian distribution with this variance and this mean. Uh, since uh, this is the uh, mean of the posterior distribution, this is by what we said earlier, uh, e equal to the uh, uh, MMC estimator we uh, were uh, seeking. Uh, and to interpret it, uh, we uh, will express uh, this uh, function in, in this way here, uh, just by recognizing that, that uh, this constant here, the, what multiplies x bar, and the, this constant here that multiplies uh, mu a, add up to 1. Therefore, we can call one of them alpha and the other uh, 1 minus alpha where alpha is uh, given by this. So uh, here uh, it's when and the uh, especially interesting part of the story comes. Uh, we see <coughs> that the MMSC estimator is a, a weighted average of mm, mm, x bar, the sample mean, and mu a, the mean of the prior distribution. So, if we remember from the previous part of the course, uh, x bar is uh, the uh, uh, MVU estimator of A, right? It's also the blue estimator of A, it's also the least squares estimator, and it is also the maximum likelihood estimator of A, right? So, uh, this uh, says that this is a, a, a pretty good. Uh, estimator of, uh, of the DC uh, level uh, when uh, we don't have any prior information about it, okay? Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, this is the mean of the, the post, uh, of the prior distribution and therefore it is our um, best guess of uh, A uh, if we don't see any data at all. Therefore, it is uh, very natural uh, that an estimator uh, combines uh, what uh, we knew before seeing the data and what the data uh, uh, tells us about the, the parameter, right? So, uh, this is actually uh, uh, common in, in Bayesian uh, statistics and it is uh, the, perhaps the mm, a nice interpretation that we need to uh, keep in mind whenever we do uh, Bayesian estimation. But uh, one may argue at this point that uh, just taking a, a weighted average uh, is not necessarily a good idea if this uh, coefficient alpha is not uh, properly chosen, right? Uh, however, we see that uh, this is not uh, the, the case here. Uh, this uh, alpha seems to be um, uh, a very good uh, choice, right? Uh, uh, to, to see that, uh, note that uh, this uh, term in the, uh, in, in the numerator is just the variance of x bar as we have derived uh, in the previous part of the, of the course. And this term uh, over here is the variance of the uh, prior distribution, right? So uh, this, uh, this one uh, effectively tells us how informative um, the data is about uh, the parameter A, right? Whereas uh, this uh, one is, as we mentioned earlier, uh, 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 a measure of... Uh, uh, uncertainty that we have before seeing the data, right? So remember that if uh, sigma a square is uh, small, then the PDF, is, the prior PDF, is uh, picky and concentrated around uh, the mean in this case, which means that uh, we are pretty sure that the true value of a is uh, in uh, around here, right? It means that we have little uh, uncertainty, right? So. Um, what we see here is that if the um, if this uh, the variance of x bar is small, then this uh, the numerator is large, right? And also this term is large, right? So uh, this may be uh, neglected, and uh, alpha will be close to one, right? So uh, 
in 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 other words when the this uh, variance of x bar is small the uh, x bar is very um, reliable then alpha is close to one we are given a high weight to x bar and little weight to our prior knowledge okay that makes uh, total sense on the other hand if uh, suppose that our uh, um, prior information is very uh, reliable our sigma a square is very small in that case uh, this one over uh, sigma a square uh, will be very large right and alpha will be uh, close to zero okay that means that we would be given a little uh, weight to the uh, what our data says and we would be given a high weight to our prior information so again this uh, makes uh, total sense so just to uh, digest this uh, further uh, uh, you may now uh, stop the video and uh, think uh, what happens uh, uh, for uh, n and becoming uh, large also what happens if uh, uh, sigma square the variance of the noise of w is uh, large or what happens when uh, the variance of the uh, of this uh, prior distribution is uh, large the answers are not uh, that difficult um, if n is large and then and this uh, term is small and then uh, alpha becomes uh, close to one right so if we have uh, many uh, samples then it means that our uh, data is uh, highly informative about the the parameter and therefore we need to um, give a high weight to the what uh, the data is telling us uh, on the other hand if uh, sigma square is high our data is uh, very noisy then we can see that alpha will be small right and therefore it means that we need to um, uh, pay more attention to what our uh, prior information is uh, saying okay and uh, finally if sigma a is, uh, square is large it means that uh, the, our prior information is very uncertain right uh, this term is large therefore this is small and alpha becomes close to one right uh, this means that we uh, need to uh, almost disregard our prior information and um, uh, focus on uh, what the data says about the uh, about the parameter right so uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, very uh, natural and uh, essentially uh, uh, shows that uh, uh, incorporating a prior information is not detrimental in Bayesian estimation, right? So if we have um, good prior information, then uh, the, our estimator will exploit it. But if our... Uh, mm, uh, prior information is not uh, very reliable it's okay and the estimator would not uh, pay much attention to it and will look more at the data so sort of an automatic way of uh, waiting um, what we knew before seeing the data and what the data uh, brings on the on the table and it is uh, furthermore uh, very uh, instructive to uh, uh, note the similarities between uh, this uh, procedure and uh, what we humans uh, naturally do right so we are uh, constantly uh, processing uh, information that uh, comes uh, from the real world into uh, our um, brains uh, through our uh, senses right so, so uh, and we are uh, uh, unconsciously combining uh, those two uh, I mean the, the what we are seeing and what we know beforehand uh, in in such a way that we uh, take into account how re reliable each source of information is right so uh, think for example that we are in the middle of the ocean and we see a, a, a white object in the distance it is um, um, too far away for us to uh, appreciate the, the, the details there 
uh, but we will most likely uh, conclude that uh, that object is a ship or, or a boat, right? Uh, uh, however, if we were in the middle of the desert, right, uh, and we see the exact same object at the exact uh, same distance, uh, we will not uh, probably conclude that uh, this is a, a boat, right? We uh, would need to get uh, very close to the, the boat and see the, uh, the details before we can actually uh, accept that it is a, a, a boat, right? So this um, is uh, essentially, uh, uh, I mean, the, the reason is that the, uh, if we are in the desert, we have a pretty strong um, uh, prior information that tells us that uh, it is uh, very unlikely to see a boat in the, in the desert, right? So uh, what all this uh, discussion uh, suggests is that uh, um, Bayesian estimators are uh, um, also quite intuitive and it seems that we are on the right track to um, do um, a good estimation job.